let's jump into the video today. So we are going to talk about manifestation, manifestation 101, how to attract your manifestations in. Oh, and really quick, if you're on the YouTube, hello, welcome back to the channel. So this video will be posted on my YouTube as well. But for those of you in the community, there's going to be other videos posted after this video, kind of like the how and getting more into details about what I'm going to talk about today. And if you're on the YouTube and you're interested in that, well, you should join my community because on my community, there's you have access to other videos, teachings that I record on my own time. Yeah. And other readings, other tr transmissions. You just have access to more content from me and um, more instructional content from me and and stuff like that just it's it's really cool anyways details for that will be in the description below if you're here on the YouTube but anyways let's jump in let's jump into the video today we are talking about manifestation I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys the way manifestation is talked about in spiritual discourse is misaligned there's it's misaligned. It's misaligned. Is manifestation real? Absolutely. We are manifesting all the time. Right now, you're manifesting. Two seconds ago, you were manifesting. Two seconds ago from now, you're manifesting. We're doing it all the time. It's something that we should definitely know of because knowing that we create our reality is important because we have free will and we can dictate kind of where we take our life. So it is important to understand manifestation. However, the way that it is being taught is very much so misaligned. Manifestation is not something that you should have to try to do. And I used to manifest in this way, okay? So this is not me saying that I am better than and I know everything. <laughs> but I, you know, I used to manifest in this way too. And it's fun. It's the idea of being able to create your own life. Like, that's fucking cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck yeah. It's cool. <laughs> so I don't blame anybody for it. I don't, yeah, I don't look down on it. But it's people are misinformed essentially and it's like how people don't know any better and I'm here to talk about it. I'm here to talk about the truth of manifestation essentially and the key to actually manifesting properly so that you actually can create the life of your dreams. Um, it's like it's like a dance with it's a dance with spirit. It's like you you're creating, but your life is also like your highest timeline is already chosen. It's already picked out and it's something that you picked out. It's something that you picked out before coming here. So it's like this delicate dance and it's this interweavingness of creation and w destiny, creation and and destiny. Um <laughs> which is really exciting but a lot of people forget about the destiny they forget that their path has been created and we fall back into wanting to control and wanting to control everything about our path do you know what i'm saying our mind is here to think and to make decisions and to protect us and our mind is amazing it's fascinating it's one of the most intricate parts of the human body or it probably is the most I mean I'm no doctor or anything like that but I could only assume it's it's literally like we need the brain the brain and an, anal an analogy that's being given to me is the brain you can compare to the remote control when you're playing video games. When you're playing video games, what is the remote control for? You need it, it's necessary. You wouldn't be able to play video games with any sort of remote control. Um, even like when you do AI things, you're holding something, right? And, oh, not AI, that's not the right word. I'm thinking of the, I think you know what I'm talking about, the ones where it's like VR, virtual reality, the virtual reality ones. You need some sort of, device to connect and anyways making it simple talking about a remote control the brain is is what the remote control is for it's equivalent to what the remote control is for when playing video games it's meant to direct you in the here and the now making decisions right now based on your environment okay what's going on around me what way do i want to walk forward backwards here hmm dinner okay i need to go get food for dinner tonight i need you know the brain is for the here and the now the brain was not created to dictate your life down the road 
just like the video game was not created to dictate the avatar's movements a week from the, the, the second they're playing. You know what I'm saying? The brain is equivalent to the remote control. And although the brain is very amazing, intelligent, intricate, all of these things, it's actually one of the least experienced least experienced parts of your being because remember we are spirit having a human experience we are energy beings we are so much more than this physical body so much more than this physical body your brain was created when you were created in the womb right your brain was created when you were created your soul was around a lot longer than that a lot longer than that and you have access to your soul all the time because it is you it is you you are a soul having a human experience think of your soul as bigger than your body often we think of our soul as inside of us like something smaller than the body but it goes so much so much more than it's bigger it's bigger it's like it's what connects you to everything else remembering that is key because when we remember that our soul is actually so much wiser than our brain, it helps us to listen to the whispers of the soul as opposed to listening to the mind. How does the soul whisper to you? It whispers to you through your body, through your emotions, through your feelings. It doesn't communicate with you really through your thoughts it doesn't communicate with you through the mind. It communicates with you in all other ways. And your soul is wise. Your soul has been around since the, ta- since the dawn of time because energy knows no space or time. So that internal voice, your internal compass, a lot of people have been taught to not listen to it. A lot of people have been taught to listen to the mind. We're taught to think our way through life when actually we should be feeling our way through life. So that's something to really remember because the way manifestation is taught is from a very like analytical way. It's taught from an egoic place, you know, like, and I'm going to get into that in a moment, but going back to what I was saying before, the mind is not supposed to dictate our our future path it's not it's literally not made for that it's not created for that but we're not taught that and that's ego ego is a very necessary part of this experience we need it it it's what makes us human it's fucking awesome and i'm gonna do it i'm going to do i'm gonna have a lot of videos on um talking about the ego more and as well, which I, if you want to step into the best version of yourself, I highly recommend watching those videos as well. Um, So again, I'll probably have one video on the YouTube and then I'm going to have a bunch more videos on the community. So join the community, check it out. If you're already a part of the community, I so appreciate you. Anyways, going back to what I was saying, the mind, you know, it, it's an ego way of teaching. We're taught to, to think and to make decisions down the road, but we're not, the mind is actually not created to do that. That's ego. Ego is very much a part of who we are. It's necessary for this experience. Um, but often ego-based teachings are rooted in fear. Ego is not rooted in truth. It's not rooted in truth. What is rooted in truth Love is rooted in truth, and that's the essence of our soul. Our soul is unconditional love. That's who we are. And I know that's kind of like, like, what do you mean I'm love? Like, it's kind of hard to like rationally like uh, understand that, but that is the essence of our soul. Everybody here, because we're all one. Having this earthly experience is simply just an illusion of separateness. Really, we're all one, and our the essence of our being is unconditional love. That's who we are, and that's where truth lies. It truth lies in love and where is love it's in our heart it's in our heart space what is your heart telling you to do the inner the your inner compass that's the voice of truth that is the voice within you that's truth the mind is programmed to you know protect us right which is necessary but often when you need protecting you get a little scared it's it's not meant to protect you from something way down the line something that you don't know you know could or couldn't happen like for example like oh my gosh you need to make sure you get a really good job because if you don't you're not going to be able to pay your bills so it's trying to protect you for something way in the future 
where the future hasn't even like unfolded yet. And fear-based teachings are not rooted in truth. They're not rooted in truth. They're ego-based. It's often rooted in fear or one of the lower vibrations. Love is the highest vibration, right? We want to be, that's who the essence of who we are. And on the journey of coming home to self, on the journey of coming home to who we are, we w- are going to raise our frequency more and more to match that of love. And that's the key to manifestation. And I'm going to get into the how and this and that. But manifestation is very much so rooted in ego, fear-based teachings. Okay, let's manifest. Let I want to manifest this in my life, this in my life, this in my life, this in my life. What are you doing? You are trying to control the outcome of your life. Do you get what I'm saying? It's trying to control the outcome of what your life is going to look like. You're trying to dictate your path to a certain extent. So those manifestations often are rooted in ego. Like, oh my gosh, I want I want to manifest a million dollars. I want to manifest a million dollars. Because honestly, who like money's awesome. Money's actually supposed to be a very beautiful thing. Why? Who wouldn't want a million dollars? I mean, that would make life a lot easier. I hear you. I hear you. I used to be a lottery player. I used to try to win the lottery because I thought that if I had enough money, I would finally be free. I would finally be able to quit my job. I would be able to travel. I'd be able to do what I really wanted to do. So, you know, trying to manifest money, trying to manifest more money, trying to manifest, you know, that's just an example. But that manifestation is actually rooted in ego because for one, it's not actually the money that I'm desiring. For most people, it's not the money that they're desiring because it, you know, what's money? You know, like it's it's a piece of paper at the end of the day. It's or it's a number. It's not necessarily that that you're desiring. It's what you can get from that. So by trying to manifest something, it's like already misaligned because it's not actually the money that you're wanting. It's what you can get from the money, and then it's asking yourself, okay, what is it that I really do want? I want freedom. I want the freedom to be able to go where I want, when I want. Maybe I want to be able to, yeah, the freedom to go on vacation, the freedom to quit my job, to have more time for me. So there's a misalignment there. There's a misalignment there. Also, a lot of these manifestations, people try to manifest, you know, their life or what they want because often they're at a place in life where they're not fully happy. They're not fully fulfilled. There's like they're wanting more. There's something that's like there's something more that I want here. There's something off. So what they do is they start, OK, what what can I manifest? Because if I were to have those things in my life, then I would be happier. Then I would ha- be fulfilled. So it's them seeking something outside of themselves. If you're into spirituality, you know that it's as within, so without. The universe is a direct reflection of your internal state. The universe is a direct reflection of your internal state. So if you're current re- in your current reality, if there's parts in your current reality where you wish were different, that's a, that's a direct reflection of something within you. That's a direct reflection of something within you. So if you're wanting more love in your life, for example, currently, and you're not seeing that in it reflect your external reality, it's actually because there's a lack of love within yourself. And that's just an example. But as within, so without. So these manifestations of, oh, I'm going to manifest all these things to create my life. It's seeking what they're wanting outside of themselves when really people need to learn how to give that to themselves first. Because if you don't, when you're seeking these things, it's going to come from a place of wanting. And you've probably heard this. And this is true when people talk about this with manifestation. The universe doesn't care about what you want. It responds to the energy that you're projecting. And when you want something, it's like really hard to just not want it all of a sudden. And if you know about manifestation, you know that you can't be putting out the energy of wanting. You have to become aligned with the frequency of whatever it is that you're wanting. You have to fully embody it and feel it so that you can align with that so that you can then attract it in. And you also have to let it go because if you're thinking about it and wanting it all the time that's not the right vibration to actually successfully attract that in so you can't lie to the universe you can't fake it to the universe like you could lie to yourself and say yeah okay 
let's say I want to I want to manifest a million dollars. I don't actually care. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. But you really actually want it. You know what I'm saying? Like you could say all you want. No, I'm letting it go. But it's really hard to actually embody letting it go. Like when you really want something, you really want something. So it's it people are often unsuccessful in manifesting their desires because they're putting out an energy of wanting which is you're telling the universe I don't have, which then is going to just further that, like confirm that more because the universe responds to the energy that you are. And what I will say, some people are good at being able to embody the energy to manifest what they want. I'm not saying it's not possible because you absolutely can. However, however, if it's an ego-based manifestation, if it's something that they are seeking outside of themselves, when that manifestation comes into their life, one, they're either not going to be able to keep it, or two, it's not going to be fulfilling, and they're just going to want more. Like, they're going to realize, okay, I still feel the same about myself on the inside, this manifestation. Maybe it was fun and exciting when it first came in. This manifestation doesn't actually give me what I was hoping it would give me. I need something more. I need something else. So I just want to say that because I'm not saying it's not possible. Some people absolutely do manifest what they're actively trying to manifest. But I'm telling you right now, wasting your energy on that is not going to get you to where your soul is actually wanting you to go. And where your soul is actually wanting you to go is your most fulfilling timeline okay if you're not in alignment with your most fulfilling timeline you're always going to feel like something's missing or you're going to feel lack of something and it's because there's some lack of something within you so regardless of what you're actually able to manifest or not into your reality doesn't really matter unless you are aligned unless you are aligned with your soul with your soul <laughs> because that's where your most fulfilling timeline lies. And you also shouldn't have to try to manifest. I used to do like the manifestation techniques all the time. Okay, manifest into my water. I want to manifest a car or whatever it is and then, you know, embody it or I want to be skinnier or I want to be, you know, and embody it and drink it or the other manifestation techniques. I used to do that. So there's no judgment, genuinely no judgment because at the time I didn't understand now I do. <laughs> so you shouldn't have to try to manifest. Doing those manifestation techniques, I used to do them too. They're, it's, in my opinion, it's, it's trying. You're trying to manifest. You should not have to try to manifest. It should not be something forced. That implies control. You're trying to control something. You're forcing something. And remember, your mind, your mind doesn't actually know what's best for you your mind doesn't always doesn't actually know what you want your soul does though your soul knows and your soul sees the path ahead of you because remember destiny you planned it all you pre-planned it before coming here free will will come into play though and depending on your frequency and where you're resonating you know like it's like a destiny tied with free will it's like a delicate dance going back to what i was saying though if you're trying to manifest you're trying to force you're trying to control the outcome and that's not going to be in in alignment with your highest potential or with your highest timeline because um the mind sometimes is incapable of actually seeing what it is that you really want what your soul really wants the mind doesn't have the capacity for it your soul does and like how do you align with your soul is starting to get to know yourself. It's like it's starting to do the healing. It's starting to do the inner work. And the more you're able to give yourself those things that you're seeking externally, you're actually going to be able to change your vibration. Like you'll actually change the vibration because again, to align with your manifestations, you have to be an energetic match to it and you can't lie to spirit. You can't lie to the universe. The universe is the most fucking intelligent thing out there. You can fool yourself because the mind might fool you, but you can't fool spirit. So how do you, how do you raise your frequency? By healing because we have wounds and shit like that that keeps us at a lower vibration. 
is literally the reality of it. It's stored in your body because time is not actually linear the way we're experiencing it. So the shit that you you thought happened years ago, oh yeah, it happened years ago, I'm good now. If you didn't actually get what you needed at that time or if you haven't yet gone back and give yourself the healing that you needed, that shit is stored in your body. That shit is stored in your body energetically and it's going to keep you, it's weight, it's it's baggage. It's it's energy baggage. It's energy baggage that's going to weigh you down. So how are you supposed to get up to the higher frequency if you've got energy baggage on you? You don't want that shit. <laughs> you don't want that shit. It's not yours to carry. It's not yours to carry. How do you get rid of it? By healing, doing the healing because that version of you, just because it was years ago, is still very much so alive within you because time is not actually linear. So go back and do that healing Go back and get and start discovering who you are and giving yourself love. By getting rid of that baggage, you're gonna raise your frequency, raise your frequency, continue to raise your frequency. And naturally, as you raise your frequency, you're gonna get closer to closer. You're going to get closer and closer to the frequency of love. And that's the highest frequency. And again, what is our soul? Our soul is love. So the closer you get to love, the closer you get to who you are. You're going to be aligned more so with your soul, your soul path. Remember, your soul has already planned your path for you. So by trusting that voice and trusting that, you don't need to control what's next. All you have to do is align to that frequency and your best path will just come to you. You're going to be a magnet for all of the fulfilling things and everything that your soul really wants for you. It's not your job to try to control It's trusting that the best path is literally already laid out for you. It's already laid out for you. The best path is already laid out for you. You don't need to try to control it. All you need to do is focus on loving yourself and healing and raising your vibration to match that of love, but actually match that of love. Because again, you can't just pretend because the universe fucking knows. And this takes time. This doesn't happen overnight. Okay, this is like, this takes time and it's also a forever choice and forever journey to maintain it. But by getting yourself there, by being energetically close to love, you're going to attract things high frequency and you're going to attract in your soul path, your most fulfilling path, all of the exciting things that are there. And it's like discovering your passions, like what you enjoy and what you're drawn to. There's a reason for it. You like those things for a reason. So have fun and explore. Don't try to control where they take you. So it's letting go of mind control, okay? Trust that your path is already made. You only need to align with with who you truly are. And you become an instant magnet when you become who you truly are. You become an instant magnet and you will be a magnet for all of your most fulfilling manifestations. Like what I realized, what I used to try to manifest, I now realize like, oh my God, that's not actually what I want. That's not actually what I wanted. And when I took the time to really dive in and go inward, what I really wanted changed. And I also am so surrendered. I trust spirit so much that like I literally don't know what my next couple weeks are going to look like. Like, I mean, I have my normal routines and stuff like that, but like I don't have anything planned because I know my soul is taking me there and I'm listening to my intuition on the way and I'm taking inspired action. Things that make me excited, I take action on those things because that's my soul communicating with me because my soul communicates with me through my body, through my energy being, through excitement, through joy, through passion. You know, like this, what I'm doing right now, I fucking love this shit. Like I love talking about this. I could talk about this all day. I could talk about it all day. The, this is where my passion lies. And I've been able to create my life around it. I've been able to create my life around it. And I know it's going to shift and change and evolve. And I don't necessarily know exactly what it's going to look like. But I don't need to know. All I need to worry about is me and remaining connected to me. Because when I'm connected to me and who I am, I know what the voice of the ego is. And I know what the voice of my soul is. And I listen to the voice of my soul. Even if logically it doesn't make sense. Even if my mind doesn't understand why it's making the decisions that it's making. Because my mind was only created when I was when this physical body was created, but my soul has been around for fucking eons. My soul is one powerful, wise motherfucker. All of our souls are wise. Everyone has access to that wisdom, but it starts here. It starts here. It starts here. It starts here. So one thing I want to add. So as I was saying, the key to manifesting your dream life is embodying essentially the energy of love. As I was saying before, embodying the energy of who you are, 
because again, love is who we are, but uh, most people are so disconnected from who we are. Like most people, like 99% of the world, 98 to 99% of the world really is the number 97 yeah like high number of people are disconnected from who they are even if they think they know who they are a lot of people their mind controls them most people in this world are not free because most people in the world their mind has control of them you want to have control of your mind a lot of people think they have control of their mind a lot of people think they do I was one of them for a long time for a long time. Everyone has the potential to connect to that inner wisdom, that higher wisdom, because it is the essence of who we are. But most people are so disconnected from who we actually are because we weren't taught. It's nobody's fault. We weren't taught. We were programmed to think our way through life. We were programmed to listen and to not think for yourself. And it's time that changes. It's really, really time that that changes. I think that's going to be it for this video. So the next video, I'm going to talk about like how you can really, how you can really start to do that. I'm going to talk about the how a little bit, because if you're a part of the community, it's a monthly subscription. Every m month I'll, I'll add, I add videos to something every month. Um, and it's like you have access to all of it, like as, as you continue to be a member of the community. But the next one is going to be more so the how, giving you more concrete, like how, like, okay, Brittany, like, how can I do that? How can I create freedom in my life? How can I, um, because we're not meant to work our life away. We're not meant to work. We're not meant to work our fucking life away. We're meant to have fun here. We're meant to create. We're, we're meant to explore our passions. That's what we're supposed to be doing here and learning and healing and growing, of course. But most people are trapped. Most people are trapped and it's nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault, but it's time that changes. We're waking up and it's time that changes. So Yes, the next video is going to be on the how. So definitely check that video out. I'm sending you so much love. Thank you so much for being here. And until next time, bye. This is me, I'm so royal. And you all want to be round. Yeah, you all want to be round. Round a champion, a champion.